Clive Jasper here. So today we're going to start talking about some old equipment that I use to uh, start this brewery up. Um, six years into it, I've upgraded most of this old equipment, but I've had a lot of comments of people that wanted to, to see my old system and uh, see how I started a brewery for, uh, for cheap. So let's, uh, let's look at it. Our first piece of equipment that we have here, probably our next on the list to upgrade, um, is our keg washer um, that we had built. So if you're looking at um, building a keg washer and kind of want some designs, or maybe just get a general idea of how a keg washer works, we'll uh, check out um, this old keg washer that's now been working for us for uh, six years and worked for a brewery before that. So this keg washer, this top is made to flip over so you can load three half barrel kegs in that top. Flipping her on over to load them. Um, so that's kind of how you get your kegs in here. If you want to look in this main trough, you can see the taps that you tap on the bottom of these kegs, and you'll also see three drains in our trough. This sanitizer, rinse water, and our caustic. So that's kind of the inside of this old keg washer. We'll rotate it around, and you can see the reservoirs. So on this reservoir side, we have two reservoirs. Some keg washers will have three for an acid loop, but one we fill up with cold sanitizer, and the other we fill up with a hot caustic. This one used to have a heating element, this reservoir side, um, to keep that caustic hot. Right now we just kind of use an on-demand heater to do that. And then this middle is just the drain that goes out. So from that trough where all those holes were, you can decide what drain to put it down. Either put it in the caustic and run a caustic loop, rinse your caustic with water, dumb it down, or run an acid loop and run an acid loop. So that's kind of the drain side of this keg washer. Flip it around here. So this is the pump side, the front side of it. We'll use a, just a mobile cart pump hooked up to here. This will be the suction side of the pump coming off here. And this hose will be on the discharge side of the pump. So it'll look like that. We can use a mobile pump for it. Um, the discharge side pumps it up into this top manifold section that feeds into these keg taps. So that is the front side and the final manifold side of this keg washer is how you'll control what goes into the pump. So up here is where we'll hook our water into. If you wanna rinse out the beer, or rinse out the chemicals, we'll uh, open the water side of things, running the pump. We have both air and CO2 we can put into this system. Um, air to blow out the caustic and blow out the water, CO2 to purge the kegs and pressurize the kegs before filling. Um, we have this butterfly coming from our caustic reservoir. So if we want to bring caustic into the pump, we'll bring caustic into the pump. Um, and then if we want to bring our sanitizer reservoir into the pump, we can bring our sanitizer reservoir into our loop. So that's kind of a, a simple setup of how we uh, got a keg washer working for uh, relatively cheap when we were first starting this brewery. Hope you liked it. All right. So I'm in my old kettle, haven't been in here for a while. Um, this is the kettle I started working with when starting the brewery. It was an old uh, spaghetti pasta cooker out of an aircraft carrier. You can see it used to have steam jacket in, steam jacket on it. Um, I couldn't afford a boiler and steam uh, when I was first starting out, so we custom welded these flanges on the outside of this kettle. Um, Where reach as much, much pasta is pretty crazy but so on those uh, flanges we'd add our heating elements 
Uh, and yeah, this is how we boiled beer when we first started when we first started up this brewery. So this is our uh, our old kettle now that's sitting in our uh, bone yard out back. All right, next to our kettle we have our Grundy tank. So kind of looks like a deep sea diving tank. Um, it can hold pressure. So this is what we use to carbonate uh, my beer on my old system. It's a deep sea diving Grundy looking tank. Um, still looks pretty cool to look at, but another piece of equipment I have out back. All right, now we're in the real far back of the brewery, getting all the really boneyard parts, old pumps that I've taken apart, um, heat exchangers, but some of the old things from the old system, this little grant we used um, to run off our mash tun in. Here's our old heat exchanger that we use, just mounted on a, on a little frame and you can move it and cool down your wart that way. So that was our old heat exchanger. All these came out of a barn in Colorado. They were used for an old dairy plant that we picked up. Um, a million old pumps and stuff <laughs> that some, most of them don't work now. And then our old mash tun. So this is uh, an uninsulated, just stainless steel square. If you want to come look over kind of how we did the inside. Um, if you look in there. You can see there's a, a almost a, a fine tube with a mesh screen around it. Almost has, acts as a secondary screen underneath. Then we have this framework sitting above that. And then you have your mesh screen sitting on top of that. So this was the old mesh tone we worked with. Um, I never had a problem with it being uninsulated. That mixture of grain and water holds its heat really well. And if you want to start out um, really for a low price, pretty cheap, then I'd suggest doing this. Um, I'll, I'll, I will always argue that you should uh, start your dream and not let money get in the way. So this mash ton allowed me to be able to start my dream and uh, help money not getting in my way. So this is our mash tun we used for years. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a quick look at some of my old my old equipment that's still sitting out here um, not being used and maybe it'll give you some confidence to build your own system or start a brewery for yourself someday. Until next time, cheers.